A car averages 27 miles per gallon. If gas costs $4.04 per gallon, which of the following is closest to how much the gas would cost for this car to travel? 2,727 typical miles. Okay, so if I know that in order to calculate this, I need to take the total miles of the trip, I'm going to divide it by the miles per gallon, and then I'm going to multiply that answer by the price per gallon. Okay, so I want you guys to go ahead and write this down, and now let's go ahead and insert the information that we were given. So the total miles that are going to be traveled are 2,727. The miles per gallon is 27 miles per gallon. So we're going to put 27 on the bottom. And then we're going to multiply that by the price per gallon, which is $4.04. So $4.04. So 27.27 divided by 27, that is equal to 101 times 4.04 and so that would total $408.04 so my answer is going to be D. All right let's go ahead and go to problem number two. It says when x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 5 by how much does the value of 3x squared minus 2y exceed the value of 2x squared minus 3y? So the two equations that are given are 3x squared minus 2y and 2x squared minus 3y. So we're comparing the two. So it says this first one exceeds the second one. So this one is probably going to be more. So let's go ahead and plug in x equals 3 and y equals 5. So where we see the x, we're going to go ahead and put the 3 minus 2, and we're going to put 5 in for y. So when we're solving this, we're following the order of operations PEMDAS. So first, we start with the parentheses, then exponents, multiply or divide, add or subtract, whichever comes first. So because there's no action to take within the parentheses, we can go ahead and move on to exponents. So 3 squared is the same as saying 3 times 3, which is 9. So 3 times 9 minus 2 times 5. Okay, so we did exponents. Now we multiply or divide. So 3 times 9 is 27. Bring down the minus sign. 2 times 5 is 10. We didn't subtract yet because multiplication comes first. So we had to multiply 3 times 9 and 2 times 5. So now 27 minus 10 is the next step because now we're on adding or subtracting. So 27 minus 10, that's going to be 17. So 3x squared minus 2y is going to be equal to 17. Okay, so now let's do the same thing with the second equation. Again, we're gonna put in three for x and five for y. So we're gonna put two, three squared minus three times five. Okay, so order of operations, parentheses, there's nothing inside the parentheses to do. So next is gonna be exponent, three times three is nine. So it'll be two times nine minus three times five. Okay, so we did the exponent, now we multiply or divide. So two times nine is 18, three times five is 15, and we bring down the subtraction sign. Now that we multiplied or divide, we can now add or subtract. So 18 minus 5 is equal to 3. So we found out what 3x squared minus 2y would be and 2x squared minus 3y would be if x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 5. But now the question is says, how much does this value exceed this other value? So they're asking, how much more is this than this? So we have to go ahead and take it one step further and subtract. 17 minus 3 is equal to 14. So it exceeds it by 14. So our answer is going to be G. Well done, you guys. All right, question number three. It says, what is the value of X when two X plus three is equal to three X minus four? So I like to go ahead and write it out. Two X plus three 
is equal to 3x minus 4. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get all the x's on one side, and I'm going to try to get all the numbers on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and add 4 to both sides. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to be left with 2x plus 7 is equal to, bring down the 3x, and the 4s cancel each other out. Okay, so because I moved this 4 to this side, I now have to move the variables to the right side. Okay, so how do I move that positive 2x to the other side? I subtract 2x from both sides. So I am left with, the 2x's cancel each other out, I'm left with 7 is equal to 3x minus 2x, which is just 1x. Okay, so now I want to get the x by itself. So again, you can divide both sides by 1, and you can cross out the 1s, and x is equal to 7 over 1, which is 7 divided by 1, which is just equal to 7. So x is equal to 7, or I can just know that anytime I see something that says 1x, that's the same as just saying x is equal to 7. That 1 can sometimes just be invisible, so x is equal to 7. So, hmm, that's not an answer choice. Hmm, interesting, interesting. The answer should be seven. I took this test online, so I think, if I'm not mistaken, let's go ahead and check to see if that's the right answer. 2x plus 3 is equal to 3x minus 4. I'm going to go ahead and put in 7. So 2 times 7 plus 3 is equal to 3 times 7 minus 4. 14 plus 3, that's 17. 21 minus 4, that's 17. Yep, the answer is positive 7. They just don't have it as an answer choice. Uh-oh. So Ms. Amber got it right, though. So the answer is 7. They just may have accidentally put the wrong answer choices. And what I did here was I plugged in the 7 into the equation again to see if that is the right answer. And yes, that was the right answer because they equal each other out when I plug in the 7. So our answer is positive 7. Okay, that one got me scared for a moment. I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I did it wrong in front of all of you guys. Okay, so now it says, what is the greatest common factor of 42 126 and 210. So 42, 126, and 210. Okay, so I'm gonna find the factors. When you're, just write this on the side, greatest common factor. When you're finding greatest common factor, you could do it backwards. First you find the factors, then you find the factors that are common, then you find the, the greatest of the three. So let's start with finding the factors of 42. I would do one times 42 is equal to 42. 2 times 21 is equal to 42, 3 times 14 is equal to 42, and 6 times 7 is equal to 42. So the factors of 42 would be 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 14, 21, and 42. Okay, so what I would do here is, because I know 126 and 210, they're going to have a lot of factors. And if I'm taking a test, and this test is timed, because it's the ACT test, I know that I can't waste a lot of time. So now my test taking skills have to kick in for me. If I was doing this for homework, then I could go through and find out all the answer choices and just make sure and check and double check and double check. But because I know that this test is timed, I'm going to go ahead and try to use some of my test taking skills, which is the greatest factor for 42 is 42. I'm going to just check to see if 42 can go into 126. So 42 times 3 is 126. So I know that 42 is also a factor of 126. And now I'm going to also check to see if 42 can go also go into 210. 42 times 5 is 210. So 42 is going to be my answer. And the way that I got this is because I know that the greatest factor that 42 is going to have is 42. So there is not going to be any greater number than 42 that's going to go into 126 and 210 that's going to be the greatest common factor. 
So the greatest common factor is going to have to be the greatest factor of this smallest number as long as it goes in to each one of these numbers. As long as 42 can go into 42, 126, and 210. So what does this mean for you when you're taking your test? Because you may be a little bit confused because I didn't do it the normal way by finding all the factors for every number. I did it the test taking way. So what does this mean for you if you're given something like this in the future? So say you have the numbers 20, the numbers 40, and the number 100. And say you have to find the greatest common factor out of the three of those. I'm going to figure out what the factors are for 20, the smallest number, because it's going to take the least amount of time. I could do 1 times 20. I could do 2 times 10. I could do 4 times 5. Okay, so the factors of 20 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. So the greatest factor of 20 is 20. So I'm going to check to see if 20 can go into 40. 20 times 2 is four, in, equal to 40. And then I'm going to see if 20 can go into 100. 20 times 5 is equal to 100. So 20 is a factor of 40, and 20 is a factor of 100. Now remember, with greatest common factor, it has to be factors of all three. It has to be common to all three. And it has to be the largest number that's common to all three. So although 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, those are all common to all three, the largest number that's going to be common to all three would be the largest number that goes into 20 as long as it also goes into 40 and also goes into 100. So if you go back to what our answer choice was, just so you know, it was 42 because 42 was the largest factor that went into 42, 126, and 210. All right, so I'm going to give another example in the future of this type of problem I'm sorry if I confused you, but I don't want to just teach you guys the long way because if this is a time test, then that's not doing you guys any good for me to teach you the long way around this. So just try to find the greatest common factor of the smallest number and see if it goes into the other numbers. That is most likely the greatest common factor of all three of the numbers. All right, so problem number five. And I'm sorry, my husband is cooking in the background, so he likes to whistle and he <laughs> likes to bang the pot. So I know that I hope you guys are not able to hear that super loud. But if you are, well, just know he's making spaghetti tonight. OK, so it says sales for a business were three million dollars more than the second year. Oh, sorry. Sales for a business were three million dollars more the second year than the first year. So we're talking about first year, so I'm gonna write that down. We're talking about a second year, gonna write that down. Okay, and then it says, if sales for the third year were $38 million, what were sales in millions of dollars for the first year? Okay, so it doesn't say what the sales for the first year were. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just make X because it's unknown. But it does say that the second year we had $3 million more the second year. So we would take X and add 3 million. I'm just gonna write the number three because we know that we're talking about millions. So the first year was X because it's unknown. The second year was the first year plus 3 million because it was 3 million more. More means you're adding. And then it says the third year were double the sales of the second year. So we have to take the entire second year value, x plus three, and we need to double it. Double it means we're timesing it by two. So we have to go ahead and we have to multiply that. It will be two times x and two times three. So the third year could be represented by two x plus six. So now we have a value for first year x, Second year is x plus 3. Third year is 2x plus 6. So let's go ahead and read the question. It says, if sales for the third year were $38 million, what were sales in millions of dollars for the first year? So they're telling us now that 2x plus 6, or the third year, is equal to $38 million. So if we can go ahead and figure out what x is equal to, then we could figure out what the first year's value is equal to. So let's go ahead and solve for x. So we're gonna subtract six from both sides. 
we're left with 2x is equal to 32. Divide 2 from both sides, x is equal to 16. Remember, we're talking about millions. So x is equal to 16 million. And remember, x is also equal to the first year's amount. So the first year's amount, x, would be equal to 16. Okay, great job, you guys. I hope I didn't confuse you too much with problem number four. I hope you stuck around, and I hope you guys continue to watch my videos because I'll be producing a lot more or making a lot more. Yeah, making feels more like me than producing. I don't really produce. Anyway, I hope this helped you guys. Have a great night, and I'll see you in the next video.